I'll now call to order this regular meeting of the Jersey City Historic Preservation Commission. It is January 8th at about 6.33 p.m. Please be advised that in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, the notice of the time, date, and place of this regularly scheduled meeting of the Jersey City Historic Preservation Commission has been sent to the Jersey Journal, the Jersey City Reporter, and Ellis Besolito on Friday, January 5th. Same notice has been sent to the city clerk for posting on the bulletin board outside of the clerk's office in City Hall and on the Jersey City website. I have proof of this notice and evidence. Iris, if we could mark it B1. B1 is marked in evidence. Thank you. All right, we'll move to a roll call. Commissioner Amatuzo is absent. Commissioner Griga? Here. Commissioner Sankam? Here. Commissioner Gunther? Here. Commissioner Lewis is absent. Commissioner Sakong? Here. Commissioner Blazak? Here. Commissioner Cronin? Here. Vice Chair Gucciardo? Here. And Chairman Gordon? Present. Okay, there are eight members of the commission in attendance. Five affirmative votes are needed for a certificate of appropriateness. Uh, we have no minutes on tonight's agenda to approve. For correspondence, um, all application materials are linked on tonight's agenda. Um, we also have copies of the agenda in the back of the room for any members of the public who would like a copy, as well as QR codes to scan to get it on your phone. Um, moving on to announcements. Case 11A, the demolition review for 205 12th Street, has requested to carry to the February HPC meeting so that they can prepare to present to the HPC. So we will not be hearing that case tonight. And then I have a couple of just general announcements since it is our first time in person. Um, welcome back in person. Um, just for the record, the, um, like I said, agendas are in the back of the room. Public Wi-Fi is available by going, clicking on public Wi-Fi under the options available. You do have to accept the terms and conditions. Um, bathrooms are around the corner. And I think that is just all of the general room announcements. Um, if anyone has a hard time hearing or anything like that, feel free to let me know. Um, then that covers that. All right, open public comment. If there are any members of the public in attendance who would like to speak regarding matters of historic preservation that are not on tonight's agenda, um, please approach the public comment mic at the front of the room. Staff sees no members of the public present and recommends a motion to open and close public comment. Motion. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We have no old business on tonight's agenda, so we can call the first case under new business. All right. I'll call case H23-170. The applicant is Nelson Benavides, RA, on behalf of Michael and Lauren Burroughs, owners. The address is 217 Pavonia Avenue uh, in the Hamilton Park Historic District. This application is for a certificate of appropriateness for the construction of a three-story rear addition facade restoration and, and interior renovations of the floor uh, in, in a, at a contributing altered three-story Italianate-influenced Renaissance Revival Row House built circa 1875. Nelson, you should be good to go. We just have to swear you in. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear that the testimony you will provide this evening will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Please state your full name, spelling and last. Nelson Benavides, B-E-N-A-V-I-D-E-S. And uh, your address? 361 8th Street, Jersey City, New Jersey. Thank you. Witness is sworn. Nelson, can you just turn on your mic? Okay. That way we pick you up on the recording. All right. Um, you should be good to go. Actually, before you go, staff notes that Nelson has previously been qualified as an expert in the field of architecture in front of this board many times. Thank you. Good evening. Good to see you all again <laughs> in person. Uh, this is 217 Pavonia Street. This is the 1938 tax photo um, showing its previous condition. Um, and through some research and site evidence, it appears that this is the consistent for the condition for that historic building. Um, there have to be three ad additional buildings in that block um, that have the same detail shown here. This is the current condition. So it's been um, highly altered. Um, most of the detailing has been removed. The stoop was removed. Um, the parlor floor windows 
uh, were shortened and the original entry was um, reduced to a window. Uh, the project sits between Erie Street and Manila uh, on Pavonia Avenue. Um, it's kind of a short block. Um, it's the rear yards only visible from a small section on 8th Street. Uh, and I'll refer to some of those photographs uh, uh, that are highlighted here later. Um, the current site essentially is just a, the original townhouse and a small addition has already been removed um, that was in the rear yard. Uh, so, and there are two addition, uh, sorry, the adjacent properties have two rear yard additions as well, um, which are shown here. This is the proposed site plan for the project. We're proposing a two story plus a basement rear yard addition, um, not extending to the full height of the original townhouse. Uh, a one-story deck um, and stairs uh, down to a rear yard, and uh, there's be paving stones and stairs down to uh, the basement level below the rear yard deck. Um, the mass of the building, is the bulk, all comply with zoning standards um, within the historic district. Um, no setbacks um, um, are being encroached, and um, the lot coverage, um, including the deck and rear yard addition, all comply. These are the proposed plans. It's gonna be a single family home. Um, currently, it's, uh, it's four family. It's been essentially gutted. Um, and I believe there was a previous application that was presented to this uh, board a few years ago to keep it as a four family. Um, the new owners uh, would prefer to do it as a single family. So the basement plan is, uh, is gonna include a family room, a bedroom, and a <coughs> bathroom, and just some general storage area. On the first floor, we have the, origin, uh, the original townhouse is being preserved um, with the new stoop being restored to the parlor floor level. Uh, and then the addition will include a, a large kitchen and rear yard deck. And on the second floor in the addition, we're doing two bedrooms. Um, this is a 22 foot wide lot. Um, so essentially it allows for two you know, normal sized bedrooms in the rear yard. Uh, addition and uh, another one bedroom in the main part of the original townhouse. And on the top floor, essentially, be a master suite with a small roof deck over the new rear yard addition. And no rooftop on the townhouse is proposed. This is the existing condition of the, sorry, of the facade. And the proposed facade essentially restores um, this big color shift uh, between my screen and the, this screen. So I'll explain the colors. <laughs> You're planning for a mauve facade. Yeah, right. exactly. yeah. um, so we're restoring um, the full soup, um, the entry doors, and the original um, entry uh, doorway entry opening. Um, we're enlarging the parlor floor windows, um, and all the windows would be a two over two and all wood. Um, the brickwork is going to be restored. Um, the, the existing lintels are essentially a soldier lintel. Um, originally we thought it was missing, had been basically stuccoed or um, removed, but with additional research we realized that it is there. Um, so we will be you know, basically repointing them using the existing um, soldier uh, lintels. And the, uh, there's an ironwork applique that goes over the windows and doors. Um, and we also plan on restoring that as well. Um, and that would be in a cast iron. Um, if it's possible, um, we're researching it. Or if not, we'd have to come up with another material that is suitable and durable um, to mimic that material. Uh, the proposed colors are, um, it's a Lafayette, uh, sorry, not a Lafayette, York Yorktown green for the cornice, a very dark, dark green. Um, the adjacent properties also have a green tone to their cornice. Um, uh, so we're planning on you know, highlighting it differently, but essentially keeping it within that, um, that, uh, that tone. Um, the windows as well would, remain, would be a La uh, Yorktown green. And the door, entry doors would be mahogany. Uh, and a, a stoop would be a brownstone mimic, along with the water table and the base. Um, this is the existing condition of the rear yard facade. 
Mm -hmm. Nelson, may I ask you some questions about the facade before yes. you go through everything, just while they're fresh in my mind, if you wouldn't mind? Um, so I, I think you said two over two in your presentation, but they're actually one over one, yes? So, uh, sorry, yes, oh, okay. one over one, yes. No divided lights um, in this, and, based on 1938 photograph. And you did mention that the decorative elements um, at the uh, lintels would be cast iron if possible, but your application says that they're, you know, they're a resin. But that's what we're researching to see if it is possible to do it in a cast iron. Right, which is, I would imagine the commission's going to prefer that as, I don't think we've ever done resin details, so hopefully you can find what you need. Right, but uh, yeah, yes, we've been looking. Um, unfortunately, like the stock items that are available for all these metalwork catalogs, right. none of them match the scale of this. Right. Um, so that's where we're looking at with iron workers to see if they would be able to do this. Gotcha. So. And my, I think my last comment, uh, too, actually, the doors, I think in the 1938 photo, it looks like a single door. Uh, Did you notice that? It's really a dark photograph. Because I'm looking at the width of the, of the opening, and I'm looking at how wide the glass is, and it looks like it might be a single door. Yeah. I, when we reviewed it with Matt, we looked at the the double door because the other townhouses have the same opening right in that masonry and it was double door i was surprised it looks like single and i was surprised right. to see it as single so i would just say take a closer look at that and um you said something about the brown you get use use the word in the brown stone a mimic what does that mean uh it's instead of using tinted concrete mimic is actually crushed brownstone okay in a mix okay um, and it has that fleck to it. So okay. it has that mineral fleck. So. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so back to the elevation. So the rear yard, the rear yard doesn't follow the typical um, adjacent property um, openings. This, this building was modified um, to this window pattern, which is atypical for this block. Uh, so, uh, and there, uh, Sorry, I'll just show you. Uh, <coughs> and so the proposed um, elevation shown here, uh, essentially we're proposing you know, side brick piers um, for the party wall, um, uh, a hardy board siding that's gonna be smooth um, in a pewter finish, uh, and then essentially uh, clad windows, um, which would be in a casement style um, for the addition. Uh, we have an Ipe wood deck with um, metal railings. And on the roof deck, uh, we also have the metal railings. And on the townhouse, uh, we are enlarging the top floor uh, windows um, to create um, the two doorways. Um, the three door panels that you see there fall in line with the three windows, uh, sorry, the paired windows plus the third window, the smaller window that was already modified. And we're essentially uh, enlarging that to one large opening. This is the proposed section um, showing the original townhouse plus in the rear yard addition and the rear yard deck and stairs down. This is the current photo of the rear yard. Uh, and so this is going back to the block and lot. Um, the following photographs will show you the visibility from 8th Street. Uh, this is the maximum, oh, sorry, the where the view where you do not see the townhouse at all. Um, the adjacent property to um, further to the west is the white building you see. Uh, and this is when, uh, this is now the other section where you, you start to see um, 217 Pavonia. Uh, and then this is the full view of 217 Pavonia from 8th Street. It's very limited and that's basically the three windows that you see, the top and the red. Again, I apologize for the color shift, but this is essentially the, the palette for the project. Um, we have the, you know, the red brick. We have a pewter finish on a hardy plank and a smooth finish. Painted cornice, um, painted windows, and um, mahogany doors, and black metal. And that concludes my presentation for this project. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, 
You had also mentioned that the rear of the building is staying intact, meaning below the top floor, you're leaving the openings in the original building as is? Uh, we're keeping the masonry wall. We're enlarging the openings within the building. You are. So yes. th so, they, so those openings will change. Yes, they'll be changing. Be behind the uh, extension. Yes. Okay. Yes. And the other question I had is about the front where you obviously have a parking space, but there's also entry under the stairs. How are you handling the entry under the stairs? Yeah, I could show you. Actually, I'll go to the construction drawings. I have a bit of a detail on that. It might make more sense to explain. So what you have here is the section of the stoop. Um, so we're restoring, you know, we're recreating the stoop um, with the traditional townhouse with the stair underneath. Um, and then if you look at the plan, uh, basically I have a, a, you know, three steps down to a landing and then entering the stoop. Got it. That's so, clear. Thank you. Um, and we're also creating a planting area on the side. Um, because uh, we are on the, uh, on the other side of the vehicle. Yeah, to the adjacent townhouse. Right. Because um, we do plan on keeping the, you know, the parking in place. Um, And the railing is... Um, it matches the, you know, the 1938 photograph. And the adjacent property, uh, one of the properties, has the, the ironwork in place. Thank you. Hi, Nelson. I have a question. Hello. Yes. Um, the parlor floor windows, I noticed on the rendering and the drawings that there appears to be a gap between the sills and the water table. Yes. As opposed to them sort of resting on top of it is... Yeah, I'll go I'm not sure if... Because I'm looking at the tax photo and it appears that the sills might actually touch the water table. Mm. The, they actually, they don't. <laughs> um, when I was there on the site, if you, it's essentially there's another brick layer that exists um, when I looked at the other property. I can go to the photograph. The photograph is obviously... Right, it looks... There is a, a, basically a brick layer. But we're going to match, essentially, what's closest to, based on the site evidence. If you zoom into the um, neighboring building photo, mm -hmm. you can actually see it. It's like a, the top edge of the coursing, yeah, let me, just oh. behind that water table. Hi, Nelson. Um, I'm trying to remember. I, I, I know this This is a very um, kind of unique row with that ornamental ironwork that's applied onto the lintels on this building. I think there may have been one that was redone like around 8 to 10 years ago. And, Maggie, I don't know if you did any research or maybe Dan might remember, but I thought maybe that there was one that had replaced maybe not all of them but done a casting and replaced at least some of them something like eight, eight to ten years ago if, I, if so, I recall ironically you are thinking of this building they had an approval from this board from 2016 where they proposed to replace all of them yeah because I as part of yeah i'm sorry to cut you off but as part of like a larger that addition that he mentioned that was taken down in the back that was part of this 2016 approval okay and so there were none there were then there were none Present at before that, then okay. Yeah, because I've also looked at the two other buildings that have some of the evidence that's there, and none of them are complete. Um, yeah. the one house that has it, it's pretty, you know, it's it's in disrepair. Yeah. I, I would just add to that if we're going to allow resin on the building, that would probably be a, be a first, and that we should really do it consciously if we're going to make that decision to to allow that to happen, because that's kind of a, a, new, a new standard that we're setting, I think. Do you have any, you don't have a sample or any sort of example of what that would, what the differences would be between that and- Not a, at the moment, yeah. yeah. And I just, I also had a couple questions maybe on the rear facade. Um, I'm, I have the construction drawings up and, on A4, there's a photo of the rear, rear yard facade current condition. And I'm, I'm not even necessarily worried about the visibility. I think you demonstrated it's going to be very minimally visible. It's a gap view. It's very small. 
But I think on this A4, it's uh, top left, photo 7, rear facade, current condition. You said that this is kind of the only one that's this configuration of the top floor. But it just it looks like uh, on the neighboring building to the right, there's a similar condition where the fire escape is at the top floor. And then there's two paired windows there. Mm -hmm. So uh, my own, my only concern is, and I think lately we've maybe been a little bit, uh, we've been allowing a lot more changes than sometimes that I'm always comfortable with on the top floor of the rear facade. I think the three story additions, generally I think this is very appropriate project. Like I said, minimally visible gap views. I'm a little, I'm a little uncomfortable with the changes to the windows at the rear facade though I think your your point of well we're only kind of we're taking out the masonry in between the paired window and the window in the center there I think that's a strong argument I'm just I'm just a little cautious and I feel like lately we've been allowing some changes on the top floor of rear facades that I've sometimes been a little bit uncomfortable with um, especially when we're allowing three-story additions and of course for this I think there's some good very good preservation and restoration going on at the, at the front of the building but this is something I'm calling attention to you don't have any photos of any of the of the rear facades in this road do you uh, not with me okay. or part of the drawing set um, I think the previous uh, one of the site photographs I did include uh, the adjacent sorry and I'm, shows. there you go yeah, and I'm more concerned because I think once you get, um, if you're on Pavonia and once you get further, this is the end of this row, right? Yes. Because the building immediately... Yeah, from the bank on Marin, Manila or Marin? I always forget. Uh, That's a Manila. Manila. Grove, from Manila, yeah. after the bank building, there is a large gap, but you cannot see this building. Yeah. Because it's, re it's over you know, 800 yeah, feet and away. I, I'm not even really con worried about the, the view. I think I think my point is from... I think it might be something like 211 or I forget where it is. It's I think 211 to 217 maybe are this row where there there's the, these are kind of unusual buildings and they have the supplied um, iron work on them. Um, so I'd just be curious what the other rear facades of this, the, that particular row look like. Um, You're talking about the rear yard facade? At the rear facade. The rear yeah. facade. Yeah. Yeah, the, both the, both properties next door have the addition. Um, I think then the last house. Yeah, if you look at this side on two seventeen, so two uh, two thirteen two uh, yeah two two fifteen has the addition. Two thirteen does not have an addition. Those are the three townhouses that appear to be the same. Once you hit two eleven, that is the more historical townhouse, more ornate townhouse that has the arched windows and the the cast iron heads that are more decorative and i think it does have the same cornice though right yeah they all have yeah. the same so cornice. It's, it's like that yeah. that four is kind of like this mini row that's kind of unique within this block so i guess my only point is is that i just want to be sure we're not changing if if there's a consistent pattern of the top floor of the rear facades of this row, considering that they're all the same uh, from 211 to 217. I just want to be sure that I'm comfortable and, and the commission's comfortable with, with the change. And if it, there isn't a consistent pattern, I'd be fine with the, the changes as is. And we're often fine with lowering a window and putting in a door that that's that's fine with me. It's, it's more just a com com combination of those two windows at the, uh, when you're looking at the rear facade, the top left. So that that's all that really has my concern on on this project out of the whole scope. So okay. I don't know if anyone else has any comments Just on that. Just a question: Is it are you treating that top floor as brick? Yes. Yeah. So it's going to remain brick. So th your view of that top floor, with the exception of the railing, is going to still be a brick facade. Yes. yes. And your the colors of your openings there. I forget what you're putting on. What material? I know it's clad. Yeah, they're going to be clad doors, and it would be a, like a dark gray. A dark, so, so that might give you a consistent feel in terms of the view of what was there. Yeah. Going back to that, the, the three photographs, you never get a uh, – you, each – when you walk there, you see barely just the, 
the, the one ha townhouse full on. Um, and then you get a glimpse of the next townhouse of their first window. Right. right. So you, there's no pattern that we really can, can see. Okay. And, and like you said, you're, you're, um, it's, if you're looking at the rear facade, you're just kind of combining the openings of exactly. the cent that center yeah. window with the two windows on the left. So. Exactly. Okay. Yes. I'm, I'm <clears throat> a little bit confused as to what's happening on the, on the front facade brick as it is today. Are the, are the grout lines painted? They're painted, yes. Over exist actual grout lines or? Yeah, the brick is there and it's in place. It's basically been painted red and with a white line. Someone, it was done yeah. a lot uh, yeah. th all over town. This was there, it became custom to paint them red and paint the lines white. Even with a shadow line sometimes. Yeah. It's, 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 it's so wacky. <laughs> yeah, that's why the lintels, you know, it appears to be that there's a steel lintel supporting, you know, a flat brick, but yeah. the soldier brick is there. So the, so two questions on the brick. So, cause I, you know, I'm just noticing the, in the surrounding buildings, you can see, you know, every six or seven courses, the header course. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I think it's just like common bond. Whereas in the, in the painted surface, it just all looks like the same coursing right. all throughout. So somebody just painted a, they basically uh, just painted all red and then just put the lines uh, as if it was there. And then, um, and originally it, there's so much paint, it almost looks like it was stuccoed. Uh huh. Um, over and and I, at one point I did speak to Dan Reardon about this project, um, and his impression was that it had a very thin parge coat ah, that okay. has essentially has completely weathered away. Got it. So that would make sense. So the, they're 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 painting on a on a canvas essentially. Essentially, yes. Not not a, okay. Um, and then um, the on the on the window, so I can see sort of the faint traces of the soldier corps behind. Um, but for example, in the, in the window that will ultimately become the front door, right? Um, what, what, how, what is the, do you know what <coughs> they use to like between the top of the window and the underside of the arch? Yeah. Like, how do they create that? Yeah, what they is that? did it as with a, you know, essentially a brick soldier arch. No, no, no. So, so the, the original soldier arch arches, right? Yes. Um, but the, but the right now that lintel line is straight. So what, what's... Right, right now it's been infilled. With what? With brick. Oh, I see. Yeah. Just additional... As far as I could tell, Got it looks it. to be brick, um, and it's been painted. Got it. Uh, so we don't actually know the condition of that brick... Exactly. You until know. we scrape away all that right. guck. Okay. Okay, thank you. That, that clarifies. I, I thought my eyes were... Going yeah, this is a unique building <laughs> yeah oh sorry and one final thing um the um the the jams of the not jams but what, what the the sides of the masonry openings appear um, they're, yeah they're canted. beveled yeah so like are the are the bricks basically shaped at each it looks they, it looks like that the bricks were cut okay so at the head and at the at the sides got it and the head is level or is it angled no it's level it's level so really there's easy. a bevel to it, but the soldier um, runs. There's a, the soldier runs, but the. But there's a bevel to the brick. But that, on the on the. On the at the on, head. At the head, got it. Yeah. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I've I've um, seen or appreciated this particular detail in Jersey City. It's 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 very um, it's 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 quite interesting. Anyway, thank you for the clarifications. Any other questions, comments? All right, Nelson, does that conclude your testimony? That concludes it. All right, beautiful. All right, if there are any members of the public present who would like to comment regarding this application, you can approach the public comment microphone. Staff sees no members of the public present and recommends a motion to open and close public comment. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, moving into staff comments. Give me just a moment to put this up on the screen. So I do 
agree with you, Stephen, that the preference is cast iron here. Admittedly, I did completely miss that on the plans. Um, so, Nelson, if you guys would accept that, I would like to put a condition on this that you guys will, um, that the preference is cast iron and you'll explore. Yes, I agree to that. Okay. Um, regarding the front door, so we went through all the tax cards for this block, and this is the only one with a single front door. My assumption is that that's a replacement. Um, these buildings were 1870. This, at the time of that photo would have been about 70 years. That front door replacement would make that sense. Makes sense. So um, they're following the design of the rest of the buildings on the block for the doors. I really don't take any issues with that. Um, those are my two staff comments in addition to the staff memo, um, which I have up on the screen. I'll scroll down to comments. Um, we do think that this is an appropriate project. The addition size is very similar to what we see commonly proposed throughout the historic districts and on this block. It matches almost an exact size to 219 Pavonia, which is more visible than this one. Um, so we don't think that that's going to have an adverse effect on the historic district. Um, we recommend that the commission approve a certificate of appropriateness with uh, conditions. The one that was read into the record regarding cast uh, the cast iron lintels, as well as those the standard conditions in the staff report. I'm happy to take any questions from any commissioners. And if there are none... Again, the recommendation for a motion is approval of certificate of appropriateness with conditions. Motion. Second. Okay. I'll do a roll call vote. Um, Commissioner Gunther? Aye. <clears throat> Aye. Commissioner Blazak? Aye. Commissioner Sankamp? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Griga? Aye. Commissioner Cronin? Aye. Commissioner Sakong? Aye. Vice Chair Gucciardo? Aye. And Chairman Gordon? Aye. Basio. There are eight votes in favor, none against, no abstentions. The COA with conditions is approved. Thank you. Thanks, Nelson. Thank you. Thanks. Good to see you. Okay. So we can move on on the agenda. You guys give me just a second. I can put this up on the screen just... Not going to worry about your dais ones. I am going to. Okay. Should be good. All right. Um, table cases. I have no update on the French American Academy. I did send them an email. They've been on here um, for almost two years at this point. So um, we're going to try to see what they can do here. Um, as I said earlier during announcements, the applicant for 205 12th Street, I believe that's supposed to be 15th Street, but it doesn't make a difference. It's going to be listed on the agenda again. Um, they are going to be appearing at the next HPC meeting. My understanding is that they're not actually going to be refuting that the building has significance. They just want to show the commission what they have planned. Um, they have a, I don't remember if they have a planning board application filed or if they have the intention of filing one, but they would like to show you how they're planning on incorporating that building into their planning board application. Um, so you just a question, if they actually did that, would, would they even need our approval? Then? No. Okay. Um, I did explain, for what it's worth, not, to, not that I don't want you guys to comment on it. I did explain to the applicant that by delaying to the next meeting, all that did was cause a month of no delay of no action on their permit. And if they had no intention of following through on their demo permit to just let us take action on it tonight, and then they could work with staff as is common, um, they have elected to come to the next meeting and show you guys what they have planned. So you guys will have full comment range on what they have planned. Nice. So I thought that would be nice. Um, we have no resolutions to introduce or discuss, no resolutions to memorialize, and do not need an executive session. So I believe that just leaves us with adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. The time is 7.08 p.m. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.